In my last video, I promised to share with you how I use this acrylic uh, swatch chart to make my paintings. So let's do it. I'm currently an art student right now, and my professor recently assigned us a portrait, and she had a, an expansive view on what qualified as a portrait, so we were allowed to paint our pets. My son had captured recently this gorgeous photo of my beautiful tortoise shell, Mary, and I absolutely loved it. I loved the hyper focus here on her intensity, and as you can probably tell, there's something special going on. It's not that she's hunting, it was about kibble time. <laughs> So that's where Mary gets her intensity from, if you wanted to know the behind the scenes of my cat. But I really loved all of the colors of, I've always loved all the colors of her fur, but I loved how my son captured them. I loved the fact that there was some fuzzing out here around on the edges of the photo because he was using portrait mode on his iPhone. I really enjoyed this collection of diffuse shadows because there was light coming at Mary from three different directions and it created kind of like this, this like, um, uh, nerd me, it's like a bat signal. <laughs> um, and so those are the things that I loved about this photo, but what I didn't love, I really didn't love, is all of the colors that were surrounding her. And they didn't do anything to highlight these this beautiful collection of warm browns that she has going on, this burnt sienna in here, and almost like a vermilion color that runs through her nose and her cafe au lait paws. So I thought, well, we've got some freedom in this assignment. I'm going to maintain a truthfulness here to her appearance and not be a slave to the photo and have some fun playing with the colors around here. I love complementary colors. So the first thing I did when I made that decision about what I was gonna do with this painting assignment is I took out my color wheel and I found a close approximation to the favorite colors that I had in Mary's picture. And what really draws me to my beautiful girl is all these warm, almost red colors that she has going on in her fur. And then of course the gold, I mean, I just love this cat. Um, so I went to my color wheel and I wanted to find this burnt sienna colors complement. And that's always going to be turquoise. So I wanted to see what I had in my collection of paints that might bring me to a shade that's similar to this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and label it in a, like a vernacular color. This is a kind of a turquoise or a deep turquoise because we're starting to shade these colors with a, a black pigments to get them into that, that, that zone of color. Well, I then took that information after I made that decision about this piece that I wanted to bring in cool blues to support all of the beauty that's going on in Mary's warms, warm browns. And I looked at my chart and there's no turquoise on this thing. I have lots of different blues, um, but they didn't really sing to me in the way that I wanted that turquoise color. So I just, I spent some time staring at this, thinking, what do I do? And then I noticed over here that I had an acrylic ink that was called muted turquoise. I'm like, well, that's almost going in that direction. So let's investigate what's involved in that particular color. So I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer so you can read my teeny tiny handwriting. I'm trying to make the most out of this particular board as I make my chart, so I'm maximizing my space. To create muted turquoise in this acrylic ink, they used uh, a violet pigment, PB23. They used a blue pigment, PB153, which is a phthalo blue. They used a black pigment, uh, PBK7, I believe is what it says. It's hard to read from this far away. Uh, and that's a carbon black. And then they used phthalo green, PB7. Well, I thought to myself, I'm like, I think I have those colors. So rather than go and try and find out um, you know, can I go to a store and buy some more paint? Let's take a look. Because rather than use this, because you'll see this is a very, very, this is basically ink. It's a, it, well, it's called acrylic ink. That's kind of, I'm losing my words today. So this is as fluid as India ink. It's beautiful. It obviously has great coverage, as you can see up here but it's not gonna get me on a whole painting that's basically 20 by 24. I'm not gonna be able to get this little bottle to give me all the shades that I want of blue. So I went investigating and I discovered that, boom, these two paints, Liquitex Basics, nothing fancy, 
and super simple names, primary blue and light green permanent. It's like, what does that even mean? So I turned my bottles over and I looked for their pigment information, which, wait, are these bottles? So some of my bottles, oh, there it is, right there. So this blue, which they just call primary blue, is actually a phthalo blue. It's PB15-3. So I knew this was the cool blue that I was looking for in my muted turquoise recipe. Over here, the pigment information here, oh, let me think. oh good, it's on this side too. It's a little bit bigger for y'all. PG7, phthalo green, which we already heard was in this recipe as well. PY40, uh, excuse me, PY74, which is a yellow, which means this is going to be a little bit warmer than I might want. And then PW6, which is titanium white. So I knew this was going to be a little too warm. And if I just mix the two of these together, I wasn't going to get those deep, beautiful, beautiful turquoise shades that I was after. So I had to keep looking. And I went to my uh, ultramarine. So my ultramarine is a green shade. That means it's going to be a little bit on the cooler side. Most ultramarines tend to be uh, a red shade and that makes it a little bit warmer and I wasn't looking for more warmth since I knew this green was going to have already had some yellow in it. So I put these three together but this remember had a violet pigment in it as well. So I went looking around I'm like well, I know I've seen I've got some P PB23 someplace and I did. It's on this bottle that I picked up. I can't remember if it was Tuesday morning or TJ Maxx. It was one of those stores and I love to look there because there's always some fun thing to discover that you didn't know you absolutely needed. <laughs> um, and it was a bottle of a De La Roni paint and in the States we don't really have this paint. So I thought I'd pick it up. I'm sure it's not the top of the line. It's labeled simply, but I'm like, it's worth a try. It's $1.29, why not bring it home? And lo and behold, this is a PB23 and a PR2122, which means it's got a violet pigment and a red pigment. And I do believe that red is Quin, Quin Magenta or Quin Red, I can't recall off the top of my head, but I knew it was going to be on the cooler side. So I decided to see what would happen if I mixed all of these paints together. Could I achieve something similar to this muted turquoise or maybe achieve something even better? Let me show you the results. And here are those four colors ready to mix. They did indeed turn into a beautiful deep dark turquoise or teal that I used to tone my canvas and paint the surrounding objects of Mary's portrait. I did get a little bit nervous about halfway through this process though. Was I going to be able to bring back in the, the warmth and all of those browns and oranges into Mary's portrait? But with a little bit of faith, a whole lot of brushwork, and the support of my beautiful girl, I was able to complete Mary's portrait with this color recipe. And that's why I love color charting so very much. Not only does it get you using your art supplies like it did with these new paints that I recently brought home, but it also helps you with your art projects. And it gets you using the supplies that you already had and giving you the information to be able to unlock all your color dreams. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and thanks for sticking with me through all of my nerdy art adventures. I really appreciate it.